Hello, everybody. Don't Welcome tell me Bruce you brought his own gavel. February 26th meeting of the Law Committee. Welcome. Um, has anyone had a chance to review the minutes from the last meeting? Yes, I'd like to make a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Card. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Minutes are approved unanimously. I'd like to jump to item two and invite Ms. Clemens up to the table, if you could, please. This is about authorizing the agreement regarding excess insurance coverage. Good evening. Good evening. Sorry, I think I was being jumped up. Um, oh, yes, surprise. And if you want to introduce yourself you. for the camera, that is always appreciated. For uh, my name is Jennifer Clement. I'm the Commissioner of Human Resources. Thank you. And uh, this is an excess insurance policy. It is with the uh, Midwest Employers Casualty <coughs> Company. It's brokered by Arthur J. J. Gallagher. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, if I could just uh, supplement that, I'm Eugenie Condon, uh, County Attorney. Um, this is our annual workers' compensation insurance. Um, it's actually the second of a two-year policy. However, um, it was marketed this year um, the way they wrote it. They wrote it. Um, we would get a, a better rate if we renewed this year, but. We weren't required to renew it this year, but they did write it essentially as a two-year policy last year, uh, which was why we did get a better rate. Gallagher, the broker, did market it for us. It renewed in January, but it's such a short turnaround time. We don't have time to come to the legislature in January, which is why we're coming now. Um, um, it is a it is the second year on the policy. It was the best rate which they obtained. They they did go and approach other markets. Um, next year there will be a full market on this. Um, the retention is $800,000 and the price is $266,463. The retention remains um, as is. Um, there was some options to change for a, a reduced premium if we wanted to increase the retention, but the broker recommended against that. They said, you know, once we increase retentions, we're never going to get them back down. So they recommended we stay where we are at this point. We, our loss history is actually very good. <coughs> These are just for the most extreme cases, right? Yes, yeah. access the above our standard yeah. workers' compensation. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yes, Mr. Rigo. Um I think I've asked you this before. Uh, I know that Gallagher shops the market for yes. us. Um, what is our policy? How long have we had Gallagher and when do we do a professional service procurement to sort of see if there are other folks who can uh, provide that level of service? So this is the second um, RFP that Gallagher is operating under. Um, in 2012 or 2013, we are we changed the way we procure insurance. We used to just do a uh, we used to have a insurance consultant. Uh, who used to do an RFP for insurance, and at 2012-2013 we changed it to um, RFP for brokerage services, and at that point we awarded to Gallagher, and now Gallagher markets it. Uh, this is the second, we're operating under the second RFP, uh, which was again awarded to Gallagher, um, I believe last year, I don't recall. Um, it's a four-year RFP, a, a four-year. Those contracts get taken to CAB, and CAB <coughs> generally approves them. Um, I usually take those in the spring uh, and request before I go. The liability renews in August, so before we start the renewal package on the liability, I take the um, Gallagher package at that point. It goes to CAB based upon the, comp the compensation that they get, the commissions that they get. We don't pay them. They are entirely commissioned, so based upon the commissions, it goes to CAB. Okay, I just, so. So we've done two RFPs total for brokerage services. This is this uh, operating under this second RFP. If they were RFPs, I believe, one year contracts each time. With, with, re, with, yes. with extensions. Yes, extensions. So we're somewhere in the second RFP yes. under an extension. I believe we are currently in the second year and we'll probably we'll be going to the third year but I might be wrong it might okay. be the second right. year it could be the second year Mr. Kirk? yeah just two questions um, now you said 
Gallagher's Shops the Market? How, yes. How, how was that done? So we, what happens is we fill out um, insurance applications, and then they go out to all of the available markets that are appropriate for our type of insurance. Yeah. Um, so last year we actually changed carriers for the workers' comp. We had a prior carrier. That Safety National. Safety National. Um, and the, and uh, they go out and they market it to, there's only so many excess workers' compensation carriers that write for municipalities and municipalities of our size. So they will take it, they'll take the, our, our documentation, which will include our numbers, our number of employees, our loss runs, our fiscal information, which includes our budget, um, and sometimes it includes our, audit, our most recently audited reports. I know what that does with our liability insurance. Yep. Um, and they take it and they provide all of that information to underwriters. And then it takes, um, it takes a while for it to come back and they'll get price quotes. A couple questions, follow-up questions on that. Um, when they do an audit, at what frequency do they do the audit? And did you, if they do an audit of your exposure? The work, so the workers' comp, right. this policy is audited every year right. based right. upon uh, it's generally the audit payroll comes out, and pay, payroll and loss, it comes out I think in April? April, April. March or April, they, right. they audit. And then um, a couple months later sometimes, when do we get the, it'll take a few months and they'll come back with the response. Sometimes there's additional premium due. That was my question. Because the numbers, when we put them in, are based upon the budgeted numbers and it depends upon what's been exposed. Exactly. It, and it depends when we start the renewal process. If we start the renewal process too soon, the budget's not done. Okay. So if we start it later, the budget's done. So sometimes it's flat. Sometimes we owe money. I don't think we, we ever get owed. On the reconciliation, we, we have owed. Okay. In, yeah. In a while. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mr. Berger? I have a, just, just a quick follow-up. This is actually for excess, for anything over 800000 do we use a TPA to uh, to handle twenty dollar copays to to eight hundred thousand? We who is that and how does that work? We currently have UMR. The uh, UMR has ended their contract with us, so we are in an emergency contract right now with uh, PMA, and we're going out to RFP. Uh, we were under a contract with UMR for. An, a, a period of time, but they um, have opted out of that contract. UMR has opted out of, I, I think, all of their. They're going out of the business of providing third-party um, administration under self-insurers. And who is PMA? PMA is our was the second bidder on the last RFP, okay. and they were our contractor for for a number of years <coughs> under the last RFP. Pomco was awarded the contract and then they became UMR. And now UMR sent us a notice in January, December or January, that they were going out of business effective eight, March or April? So March 1st, March 1st. Uh, we will be back with PMA on an emergency basis until the new RFP is complete. Now, is that something that Gallagher will shop for us, or do we go out with it for our own RFB for the zero to eight hundred thousand? It's a self-insured product. It's not insurance, so it's not brokered out. It's uh, TPA services only, third-party administrative services. Right. Um, it's not insured. The insurance we're self-insured under. Workers right, but I mean, we're we obviously have to pay somebody. You're doing an RFP. Mm -hmm. You have to pay for those services. Does that come back? Is it above or below a hundred thousand dollars? Does that go back to CAB or does it come back to the legislature? It will oh, come no. back to the full legislature for RFP for contract award under that RFP. Okay. Thank you. I have a question. How many claims do we have asserted against this type of policy currently, or what's the historically over the last couple of years? What is the average per year? Uh, I'd have to get you the exact, because um, it's cumulative, so it's per per um, individual, so I would have to go pull, because they, they may hit that threshold at any point, so I'd have to go pull last year's, did you want, how many years back? Just maybe like the last three, or, okay. or just an estimate, do you have a ballpark estimate for the last few years, I last year? 
I believe we had one claim hit the um, the threshold. It also uh, notice goes to the uh, carrier when we have a, a potential large claim loss, so it gets the, kind of on a, a watch list because it's um, getting close, or it was an injury that would could result in that. So I don't want to give an exact. Um, it goes to a reserve where we would be watching it to hit that threshold. Thank you. Any more questions? Motion. 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 Thank you, Second. Mr. Berkowitz. Seconded by Ms. Cunningham. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much for your Thank time. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for taking us out of order. I appreciate it. Table, please. We're, please. Thank you for your patience. We're on oh, item one. Jen's son had a game. I understand the priorities. <laughs> <you know. laughs> of course. We try to accommodate Good evening. I'm Karen Ziegler. I'm the director of the uh, Crime Victim Central Violence Center. And thank you for your time. We'd like to do our, our no annual Take Back the Night uh, rally in March, which we're holding in April, which is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. We do this in conjunction with the local colleges as well as the community. So we're very excited to host this year's event. Please have good uh, thoughts for us. We're going to be at the Washington Park Lake House, and it is a wonderful event for the community. We, we have tablers. We have around 20 to 30 tablers throughout the Albany County area, um, people who provide services that we'd like to make sure that um, our citizens are aware of. Are there any questions? I just have a quick question. In the resolution, it says uh, the issue of violence against women, and is this just for is this just for women or it's for men women and children it's it i think that's just the um should that be should that be changed that uh, we can the we can adjust it any way the legislature wants you know we can we can do that we can adjust it in that way would you recommend that we broaden the scope of the word woman in the resolution well i think miss whalen just to be clear this is an old resolution that uh uh, Ms. Ziegler put in as an example of something that was passed in the past. We can adjust going forward when we write the resolution for this meeting uh, to include men, women, and uh, all uh, children and uh, non gender conforming individuals. Absolutely. That's, That's a good idea. Absolutely. Sometimes I know forms take on a life of their own and they just get perpetuated, but since I'm new and I'm looking at things with a fine tooth comb, it might be a good idea to just. Sure change that to broaden the scope. And we would love it to be as inclusive as possible. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Nope. Motion. Thank you, Mr. Peter. Okay. Second, Mr. Ricard. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, item three, concerning a grant application and agreement with the New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services. Welcome. Good evening. Uh, I'm Heather Orth, Chief of Staff for uh, District Attorney David Soros. Thanks, Ms. Orth. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? So number three um, is for our aid to prosecution program. This is funding that comes from BCJS. This is a renewal. There is no application process. It's provided to DA's uh, offices across the state to um, prosecute, repeat, and persistent violent felons. And the funds in this grant go towards Partial salary for the chief ADA and partial salary for the um, bureau chief of our major offense unit. Trying to do this uh, respectfully. Um, the title of this is Motor Vehicle Theft and Insurance Fraud Prevention. Number three is aid to prosecution. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Three. Okay, yep. aid, aid to prosecution. I'll be here for the next four. Okay, so, yeah. all right. <laughs> Are these crimes that you're talking about still cover, are, are they covered under the bail release program? Some are and some aren't. Um, 
the talking points are that violent criminals um, always uh, are, are eligible for bail now, even under reform. We know uh, that that's not the case. So some of the crimes that are tagged as aid to prosecution crimes um, that we would tag in our system to report on to the state are crimes that you still can ask for bail. Uh, several of them are not. Has the state put any limitations on you on the use of these funds based on the new uh, law which went into effect on January 1st? Not as of yet, no. Any other questions? Motion. I can, Mr. Peter. Thank you, Ms. Cunningham. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Ms. Ward. Number four is yours as well, correct? Number four is again a DCJS grant. Uh, it is a renewal for our motor vehicle theft and insurance fraud prevention uh, program. The funds come from the New York State Insurance Fund uh, through DCJS, and those funds support the uh, partial salary of an assistant district attorney who handles motor vehicle theft cases in our office, as well as a partial salary for uh, the supervisor in that unit who also handles and supervises those cases. Great. Any questions? If not, I'd like to make a motion. Second. Thank you, Mr. Peter. Thank you, Mr. Feeney. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Thank you. Number five, another grant application. Uh, number five is the Crimes Against Revenue Program. Uh, this program is, a again, a renewal from New York State uh, through DCJS. These funds are used to support multiple ADAs and support staff um, in our, and investigators in our office to investigate and prosecute cases of revenue theft from New York State counties, local uh, jurisdictions, uh, with the intent to get restitution recovered for um, the local jurisdictions as well as the state. Uh, and those dollars that are gained as restitution actually fund um, the grant. Any questions? Can you give us an example of uh, cases that you've been involved with under this program? Sure. So um, people who might have, uh, there's a, a, a local judge who you might have heard about um, who was prosecuted um, and people who may not pay their taxes on those types of cases on income that they're getting, uh, cigarette tax cases, anything uh, uh, Medicaid, uh, Medicare type of, of, of fraud, um, and anyone who you know defrauds the county. If they're getting assistance from the county and they don't deserve assistance from the county, um, those cases will be investigated and prosecuted um, if they rise to the threshold. In every instance, you seek to get restitution so that we can make the county whole. Um, prior to you know those cases being uh, disposed. So this this program benefits individual people, the county, municipalities, and maybe even the federal government under Absolutely. Medicaid. Okay. Thank you. I have a question. How does this how does the DA's office work with say the attorney general's office when your interests are overlapping like and the the crime victims fund or the lawyers fund for client client for protection? Do you work on the cases together, or? So jurisdictionally, um, there uh, there are some overlaps, but in most instances, um, our office will work together with the Attorney General's office. Sometimes we'll work together to see which, um, does, this, does the federal, does the state, does the local um, uh, system have the best possible resolution for the victim? Um, because in these cases, yes, we want to hold the offender accountable. But restitution is also important because it can tear people's lives apart if you know, you're not getting restitution. So we always seek restitution. We work with the Office of Victim Services extremely care uh, closely. We have a grant through them as well. Um, and we also work with NIFTI that has a victim's fund, a uh, witness protection fund, that we can seek to get restitution there if we exhaust all other options and aren't able to do anything. Thank you. no other questions, I'd like to make a motion. Thank you, Mr. Peter. Second, Second Mr. Feeney. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Peter. And on to number six. So this um, amendment, or this uh, resolution, seeks to adjust our 2020 budget. Um, in 2019, 
we uh, made a case to the legislature for what we believed was coming in terms of criminal justice reforms. Um, you graciously listened. Um, you allowed us to adjust our budget in 2019 so that we could prepare technologically for what was coming. Um, in that process, we also made a request for positions. You graciously gave us those positions. And when we were making all of those asks, we were um, doing so based on an evaluation of what we believed was going to happen, what the expectations were uh, once these laws went into effect. Because of what you were able to give us to invest in technology um, prior to 2020 when these laws took effect, we were able to automate and go completely digital with every case in our office. So that beginning on January 1st, we were able to get cases in digitally from police departments, um, transmit them to defense attorneys digitally. And because of that, um, that's kind of changed what our processes have been in the office. Um, and so what we're looking to do now is take some of the positions that you gave us and use those funds to create what we actually need based on what the actual laws are now that we have been living with them for two months. So what we're seeking to do is change, um, use some of the funding that was given to us for uh, technical positions and support staff positions and fund that and fund some new attorney positions. Um, you know, we process about 200 new cases that come into the office every week. So 200 cases on the first week, okay, okay, we can handle that, but then it becomes 400, and then really quickly, you know, we're talking close to 2,000 cases by now that we've opened, um, and every single one of those has to be certified in court by an attorney. And so while we are, you know, hanging in there and processing the cases digitally and getting the, um, the files and getting the materials to our um, partners on the defense side, uh, the certifications in court, an attorney has to be there every single time. So we're seeking to utilize some of those funds, those same funds, we're not asking for any increases, but just to utilize them in a different aspect in our office so that we can continue to comply uh, with the reforms that were put into place on January 1st. So just so I understand this, so um, take the bottom two receptionist and crime victim program coordinator. So you're asking for increases there that look like a, just a straight off salary increase? So those two are actually positions in the 2020 budget that existed in 2019 that were not given the 2% increase. Okay, so that's what the intent is. That's what those two, the bottom two are, okay. correct. So if I look at like confidential assistant to the DA, is that you? That is me. Yes. Okay, so it looks like you're getting a $16,000 raise. Is that what that means? So, the, no. <laughs> um, it's just, it's moving funds. Um, my salary is remaining exactly the same as it is right now. So explain that to me. I don't really understand that. Okay, so at the beginning of 2020, I was moved into the um, one of the bureau chief lines. The DA um, had determined that based on my work and getting us to where we were in 2020, that I should be at the same level as a bureau chief. We had the line open, we weren't using it, and so the salaries were switched. And so this is um, cr making sure that the line matches what the um, title is okay. in the budget. So your title is no longer going to be what this is? It is. I am currently in a bureau chief line, oh. but my title is yeah. confidential assistant to the district attorney. Okay. So, I mean, I'm all about leaders figuring out how they manage their budgets appropriately and moving things around and matching um, the resources to the appropriate positions in order to get the job done. Um, it just strikes me as kind of early to be jumping in to re doing the budget a bit and to, I know you said you've had two months but it hasn't really even been two months um, so I'm just kind of curious about that. Well, what I can tell you is we started um, digitizing all of our files in September. So from September until, um, and, and the budget was put into effect in, when we made the ask, it was June. And then when the final, when we met with members of the legislature, we're talking October. So we didn't have all of our files digitized until we got really till the end of December, middle end of December. You know, we asked for um, attorneys in our ask and we were given um, graciously thank you um, we were given um, technological and support staff positions and so now again i mean as 
we just don't have, we operate in 17 different courts um, every day of the week, uh, nights, weekends, evenings, and we need more attorneys to physically be in all the locations. Can I ask a follow-up? You were first up, go first. Oh. So just but to clarify, like, and I, and I, uh, I understand my, uh, my colleague Joanne's um, concern about changing the budget so soon after it was passed mm -hmm. and stuff, but this is budget neutral, right? It is budget neutral. And I understand we're sort of operating under a relatively fast timeline with some of these discovery laws and things of that nature and sort of seeing where we have to go with it. Is that, and, it, and sort of that's coming Correct. at us pretty fast, right? Correct. And what I can tell you is we've been able to fill some of these support staff positions and, and we are utilizing them. And these, you know, but our ADAs are working an immense amount of hours. I mean, if you come into our office any weekend, any evening, people are there and they're going through and they're trying to certify discovery. The discovery paperwork that we have to file for every single case is 20 pages. So if you take 10,000 cases that were, you know, that we have, that we had to go back and certify retroactively, and then now we have to, every single new case, we have to make sure we have all the materials. And our support staff can help make sure we have the materials, but it's really our attorneys who have a, a law license who have to stand up in front of a judge and say, I certify that I have everything that we need on this case, and that I, I'm saying to you, there's nothing that you're going to find. This is everything that we have, and I have turned it over. And so it's, while we need the support staff on the front end, it's really the attorneys on the back end. Yep. It's two quick questions. Uh, a great portion of this is obviously because of the bail reform, would you say? Uh, th this is mostly discovery reform. The okay. bail reform really doesn't affect us, but it's discovery. discovery. Yeah. Okay. So I read an article, I think it was, that said uh, because of the, you're using old cable, send the information through cables, then the defense attorney can look up that information. Mm -hmm. So doesn't that save uh, time in your office by him or her looking up that information so absolutely but but what needs to happen is so we we are using the um, old the sheriff's old 911 network right. and there is a direct connection um, between most of the police agencies and 112 state street with each of those uh, with that network so we get the information digitally we put it into our case management system our ADAs can go in and, and look at it but what you also have to do is is you have to do a certification so we can I mean yes once we know we have everything yeah. within our system we can then transmit that information to um, you know public defenders office or any other uh, private attorney that we have um, but you still have to go through and ensure that you have everything we don't want you know there's kind of this assumption that when you that we're NCIS right so we, we get a case and we can like open up 17 different screens and we have this over here and this here and press buttons and it's really cool and I'd like to be there and you guys are helping us get closer to that but I mean the each Albany Police Department has 17 different systems that they use that they have to pull information from from each aisle and each location and this detective has this paperwork and that one has the forensic you know so it's just it's a it's a massive undertaking to get it's a logistical nightmare to get all the stuff yep. which we've we're pretty good on that end but it's now in court in front of a judge every single case has to be certified and so you can file a certificate and then the judge has a hearing to ask you are you sure you're certified are you really certified and only the attorneys can do that okay can, I, I have a, just want to go through this Thank you. so you, Thank you. Um, quite vehemently last year advocated for many many positions yes and after a, a hard-fought battle with the legislature, we're granted a certain number of them. Correct. And now you're saying you do not need the legal secretaries, uh -huh. you don't need the database administrator, you don't need the criminal investigators, or the bureau chief assistant DA, or the assistant trial, the attorney trial assistant? So what, what we're saying is we were given nine positions. And they are very heavy on the support side. And what we're saying is we need all those positions. We also need more attorneys. We are willing to come in and say, right now, based on the technological advances that we were able to get to, we're in a position where we would rather trade some of the support that we were given for attorneys. Because our attorneys are drowning. Everyone's drowning. But we are willing to say, look, let's see how this goes. Let's see if we can even out the attorney side and then 
maybe we need more. I, I, I don't know yet. You know, we're at a point where we have 2,000 new cases. When we get to 4,000 and 6,000 and 8,000 new cases, we might be, I, I'm hoping we won't be back, but we are, we're light on the additional burdens that were placed on the attorney side. And so we're not saying we don't need them. If you'd like to give us new attorney positions without giving up the other ones, I'd be gracious enough to say yes, please, and thank you. Um, but you know, in an attempt to be fiscally responsible, um, in an attempt to really work with the legislature, and you know, let you know we're we're not just being frivolous here. You know, we're really trying to work within the means that you gave us, um, and really try to do the best job for the people of Albany without increasing the budget dramatically. So we're trying to do it in a budget neutral manner. Mr. Burke was also in the hospital. Yeah, I, I just have a quick question. How are you doing keeping up? Have, have you, I mean, uh, lips just above water or, or an occasional dunking or? Uh, I think we are, um, we are learning to tread water. Um, and, and it, you know, it really depends on rulings from judges. We have, within the same courthouse, potentially two, three different judges, and they're making different rulings based on their interpretation of the law because it is so new. It hasn't been litigated yet. It, you know, we don't have these decisions yet. So we are constantly bouncing between, well, okay, it's in front of this judge, so this is where we have to go with this one, but it's in front of this judge, and this is how we work with this judge, and oh, that's, in, it, that's over in Colony, and this judge in Colony says it this way in this interpretation. So, um, it, it's it's difficult, you know. It really is difficult. We're we're, we're doing the best that we can. Um, you know, we haven't gotten any cases dismissed yet based on the fact that we're not producing. But police departments, we haven't really gotten to that point yet. We haven't really litigated it because we're we're getting documentation from police departments. Defense attorneys are going through it, um, and we haven't got to a point where we're taking these cases really to trial yet. So I think. We're doing the best that we can. Um, I, I don't. I'm not hearing a lot of complaints that we're not getting stuff. You know, I, I have heard stop sending the emails with all the stuff attached. It's too much stuff, which it is. It's a lot of material. Um, I'm not going to say we're succeeding 100 percent, but I, I think we're, we're absolutely doing the best that we can. And, and like I said, I think if you were to come into our office. Saturday, Sunday, even if you were to go over right now, there are people in the office doing discovery. They are checking boxes. They are creating these certificates of compliance and, and submitting them. And we're putting forth our best, best faith effort. On the discovery reform request sheet, could you just go through quickly what positions are actually new ones being created as opposed to increases in salaries being given just I mean if you could just run through that quickly okay so there are no increases in salaries um, given what's happening is we are um, the keep the uh, okay so the two bottom we know are just uh, two percent increases mm -hmm. the um, legal secretaries we are getting rid of those uh, positions um, and we are reallocating those funds to low-level um, criminal law associates. So they're so lawyers. They're, they're attorneys. Yes, they're and attorneys. They're new. They're coming in new. Yes. Yep. At thirty-nine thousand eight twenty-six. So their total salary for the year is fifty-four uh, thousand one hundred twenty-two. But because we're starting in April, that's the prorated cost. Okay. Um, the database administrator. Um, we are going to give up that kind of high-level administrative tech position for a new a higher level ADA position, um, that ADA 6 position. So, so the, that will be a new person. That sorry, is a new person. That's a new person coming Correct. in. And they'll be at 102-832? Correct. An um, ADA 6. What is an ADA 6? An ADA 6 is our highest level ADA underneath the bureau chief. So they're someone who can oversee the um, discovery process. So really what this does is it almost creates a discovery unit. Um, our chief ADA and our deputy chief ADA are really the two people right now who are overseeing discovery. So that's the highest level people in our organization that are overseeing this. We believe that with the creation of this unit here with um, an ADA 5 and ADA 6 and two uh, kind of worker bees um, on the lower level of our ADAs, we believe that, that they can really oversee the function of uh, the discovery role in conjunction with the support staff that we have. 
So two, uh, the next two criminal investigators are part-time and they're being eliminated, is that? So the two part-time investigator positions are going full-time. So um, what I guess another facet of discovery is a lot of people are out. Um, if someone is indicted and they don't come back to court, it is our job, it is the responsibility of the district attorney and the investigators in the district attorney's office to go get that person. If we don't, it's our time because we know where the person is, theoretically, and they're indicted, so it's our case now. It's not on the local police departments anymore. Um, additionally, we have, you know, there's been kind of some horrific witness protection uh, stories that have been out there in terms of what's going on with, the, with you know, the new laws. Our witness protection needs have increased. We have um, individuals whose name and contact information are being turned over uh, to defendants that they know or don't know within 15 days. So there's additional um, walking people through, um, you know, plans uh, and what they can do, safety planning. Um, that those needs have increased as people are now becoming more aware that their information is being uh, turned over, um, and people are a little bit more afraid. Um, I think now as they're hearing what's going on. So we have um, the investigators who are part-time, we're seeking to make those full-time to look at, to deal with some of those increases. And one of the part-time investigators is the only female investigator. Um, we have, she's uh, part-time, so we want her to be full-time so that we have additional resources if a uh, female witness needs to be uh, transported or a defendant. Um, additionally, if people are found in other jurisdictions, uh, in, we sometimes have to fly to California or uh, all over the country to pick up individuals um, if they have been indicted and we want to pick them up. And uh, we have evidence at times that needs to be transported. Uh, for instance, we've had phones that we have to physically take, fly to California, to Apple to be unlocked, and then fly back with the evidence and there has to be two people there. So um, it's just a, there's a lot of changes and the investigative services have increased just along with everything else in the office. Okay. Your chief assistant DA, did we talk about that one? Yes, so that is the position that I'm currently in. We're defunding that because I'm just changing the title of that position to what my title is, okay. which is that confidential assistant to the DA. Okay. Then we're adding an, another ADA. Correct. And the attorney trial assistant, we had two, um, and we are switching around those funds um, to, you know, reallocate uh, the funds to the um, ADA and the uh, clerk of the works position. So was the attorney's trial assistant an attorney or no a support? Okay. Yeah, support. Okay. High level support experience. Okay, thank you. So, so the ADA five and six. What do they do other than discover oversight? So um, again, those are most of our, our you know, 10, 12, 14 years of experience in the office. So they have the ability to really do anything. They, you know, they're, they're most likely litigating uh, felony cases or overseeing um, you know, local courts. Um, and they probably have a felony case. Or they, they're, they're not quite a bureau chief, but they're getting there. So uh, we have uh, two ADA sixes now, and we have five. Um, we have four ADA fives, and those are they're doing a, a heavy lift of our major felony caseload. Make a motion. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Local law A. Talk about the public hearing, please. 
This, um, as we've discussed, uh, this proposal will allow the legislator to move more time uh, to look at the tentative budget. Uh, for anyone who's attended the meetings involved, you know how tight the timeline currently is. Uh, with four county holidays falling within the timeline, it's procedurally very difficult. The farther we get away from that, the better, but this is consistent with what other counties provide. For now, we're just looking to move the public hearing out. Motion. Since you're there, can I just ask a question? Sure. I know it's not on the public hearing, it's not the actual yeah. resolution. Um, so this is a whole month, so is the county exact on board with this, or how much interaction and discussion have you had with respect to the implications? That We've been discussing, and you know, I'm, I'm open to negotiation. Everything's open to negotiation. Um, historically, we have you know, gotten the budget you know, in September, as early as September 6th, so it is doable. Um, the department heads are supposed to have their budgets in by July. Um, we were just, it was glaringly, you know, the case this year especially, you know, how tight line, you know, the, how tight the timeline was. Um, so there has been discussion, and we're willing to work with the county exec's office, but this is kind of where we landed at this point. Okay. So they have no objection. <laughs> do they have do they object to 15 September uh, yeah. well I wouldn't say it's been an outright objection um, you know but again the, the historical the answer you know, is they don't like it time is there I wouldn't I mean it's it is it's it's a bit of a give-and-take last year how many working days did we actually have by the time we got the budget and I, that was an issue, right? Yeah, we had 12 working days right. to, to parse through it, and it was just our second time going around, and you know, just why, why place ourselves in you know, a truncated timeline, self-imposed. I'll make a motion to move out the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone. To be continued, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, this is just a handout uh, designating Ms. Bosk as a prime sponsor for uh, this right. pursuant to resolution 237 of 2019. Thank you. Can you add me to the public hearing? Sure. Okay. So item 8 is just for the public hearing on proposed local law B. Motion. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No, nope. passes unanimously. Thank you. And item nine, we're uh, tabling September public hearing. Penny public hearing and ten. Can I ask a question though about ten? Yeah, I got a question on ten too. Yeah. Because sure. we have all the lawyers here. So what are the implications and maybe this has been already discussed mm -hmm. in other venues and whatnot, but are there any implications about this local law and uh, whether or not it would stop the more light stuff burning, no. the PFAS burning in Cohoes? So we'd have to we'd have to look at that in terms of the specifics of what they're burning. I mean the definition you have in the law in terms of waste is fairly broad yeah. and it's pretty broad yeah, the definition is as you know it's yeah, the about 15 or 16 categories of waste so I think it's broad enough where it's probable it would cover but I'd have to get back to you to find so out what they're that before yeah. we no, nor like right yeah, it's yeah. The, the PFO. that's actually in my legislative district um, I want to hit that in a second though but I want to go back so item 10 you table that is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And so, can't yeah. act on it before a public hearing. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. I have a lot of questions about that whole local law B. We can discuss that. Getting back to uh, my colleague uh, Joanne's uh, comment about Norlite. Uh, from what I can understand from Norlite's position is they already um, they don't have to have a, a permit or an okay to burn supposedly what they burned up until. 2019 December is when's the last time they burned that allegedly um, I'm also hearing there's no science to determine if that is an issue what they did in fact burn uh, that's what, what they're mean? saying there's, no, there's no science to justify if there's any uh, causal effects of causing harmful uh, situations burning PFAS? that's what they're alleging that's what they're alleging 
That's what they're alleging. They've said it in uh, various public documents. So, but I was interested in that too, if you could add that to possibly to what you're doing down there, with that sure. other situation. So my uh, understanding from some of the news that's been written, which I don't know if this is true or not, is yep. that their intent is to further burn PFAS in that facility. Well, I, I think from what I can ascertain again, they were given the okay to do that according to their $30 million upgrade. They had the authority to do that right. by right. the DEC. So I don't know how we can the business has an agreement to do something, they base their $30 million investment in that facility to do it. How can any legislative body, whether it's um, Albany County, New York State, go and change something after they already had the agreement to do that? Just my personal opinion, but I, I don't know. I'm not an attorney. Mm -hmm. You guys are obviously well, I, attorneys. I am an attorney, and I have a problem with this, and I was, I was wondering if it's been briefed, like where do we get the empowerment to say that this law will supersede any law that's less stringent. Like, mm -hmm. where is that? Give me, like, a, sure. a case case law for that. So, I'm not going to give you case law because I don't have an encyclopedic memory of case law. It's thousands yeah. of cases out there. Uh, but you've researched that, so you have That is correct. That's actually uh, a, a subject of discussion that we're waiting to hear in the public hearing from people on. Um, there could potentially be adjustments in that regard. You know, that's that's an issue that needs to be better. I, I don't think legally we have the authority to supersede. Mm -hmm. Right. The so government that's you, basically giving yes. the license to New Orleans. Yeah, yeah. My understanding is the Fed, the Fed yeah. set the floor. The states can be more stringent, and right. counties can be even more stringent. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I, 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 I got to tell you, I'm I'm sort really I'm sort of understand. where Jennifer is because I'll give you. I think it's the. I'll opposite. I'll make up an analogy. Right, you're right, yeah. but if. The colony delegation got together and said, we have a regional landfill in the town of Colony. Town of Colony's leased it out to somebody, uh, county waste. Well, you know something? We think, we, the county legislature, thinks that regardless of their DEC permit, regardless of EPA re regulations, nobody outside of the town of Colony can dump in that landfill. Mm -hmm. Can we abrogate a DEC permit, contracts that companies may have, investments that were made, uh, $50 million landfill cells built, because we all of a sudden decide that we, with our scientific wisdom here, uh, no better than than DEC, and I've I've sort of got the same thing because if we f go along with the route that your folks are talking about in doing away with existing EPA permits, and and not only that, it is policy recommended by EPA. Um, so, so Paul, can I? jump in. You're yep. talking about two separate things, separate and distinct things. You're talking about issuance of licenses through DCC, which is a regulatory agency yeah. controlled by the state. That occurred well before this law was contemplated by the Albany County Legislature. Now, to Ms. Whalen's question about preemption, the EPA, the Clean Air Act, the Air Pollution Act, and the state side, those, those are not the ceiling. Those don't set the ceiling localities have the ability, uh, it's clear case law, that they have the ability to set stricter standards. That's clear in the case law through the Air Pollution Act, through the uh, Clean Air Act, through all this, uh, the statutes that are set in here. Uh, that's undisputed and cannot be disputed. Municipalities have the ability to set stricter standards. Now, the question that you're asking is much more nuanced. Can a regulatory agency's license be invalidated through a valid authorization of municipal power regulating clean air? Um, if you're saying, would a company potentially bring that up? Possibly. I mean, that's a valid that's but, a valid but, argument, but, but whether it would win but, is a different But question. these guys have a state-issued mm -hmm. permit they to do this. They do. That so, occurred before this law was contemplated. So we have right. a right to pass this type of a law. Um, 
what you're talking about is something that would be litigated, and the question well, is unclear. Uh, the question is unclear. Yeah. I mean, the answer is not clear. It's not black and white. What you're talking about is has been litigated numerous times. Um, and courts go different directions depending on what dis judicial districts. So if it was litigated, the exposure would be against Albany County. The so we're talking about hypotheticals. I'm not going to answer questions about hypothetically if something is litigated. But you're a lawyer, right? I'm not answering questions. I'm not, no, no. I am not answering hypotheticals. Is that clear? Is that clear? I'm not answering hypotheticals. Yeah, I'm not answering hypotheticals. It should be a public You want to discuss it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will note that. We're, we finished the agenda for this yeah. evening, and there Motion will be other adjourn. opportunities. So is this just for fun? <laughs> yes. This is just, just, just start, 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 start a discussion. There's nothing wrong with discussion. There's good ones. I think that's good. We don't have the sponsor here. Yeah. We have a, it wasn't yeah. intended. I would like to second. Yes. Okay. We have a second on a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.